Hi, it's Pastor Ann. Hey, it's Miss Anna. Hi from Miss Jordan. Hey friends, it's Miss Alyssa. Hi, it's Miss Jacqueline. Hi, it's Miss Wendy. Hi, it's Miss Katie. I know the reason why my feet can't stop. My heart can't help but sing. It's a wonderful feeling to feel your love. So I sing to you. The reason is you, Jesus. You're why I'm singing out. The reason is you, Jesus. You're what it's all about. At the cross, you set me free. And I'm thankful that you love me. Whoa. completed your pyramid. Yes! Sir. You've been trying to do that for like years. <laughs> Great job, bud. Thanks. Uh, so I'm gonna go. Uh, I gotta give my uh, goldfish uh, bath. Sure, see ya. <laughs> Hello everyone, I'm Brandon. And I'm John. And this is the So-and-So Show. Oh yes! <laughs> you didn't stand a chance, man! You didn't! <laughs> oh, here I am, just minding my own business. No one should suspect anything, and then... Boom! Oh, I didn't even see it coming, did you? <laughs> 
Oh, hey, hey, what's that behind you? Huh? What's that behind you? Wow, too easy. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. What are you doing, John? Oh, well, uh, I'm training for a competition called the Battle of the Headless Hostman. That sounds terrifying. No, it's intense. Yeah. Hosts from around the world come together to battle to become the last host standing. Every host wears a paper bag on their head and everyone else tries to rip the bag off. If your bag gets ripped off, you're out. Oh, I'm sorry I'm gonna miss that. <laughs> I signed you up. Awesome, well, guess I should train. Uh-huh. Yoink, there, I'm ready. No, that's not how you do it. What are you doing? What, no, I just... No, 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 that's not how you do it. You have to, you have to wear these. What are these? Oh, uh -huh. okay, wow. <laughs> Makes it harder, right? <laughs> yeah, and sure. also, if we're really gonna do this, we should suit up. Suit up? Mm-hmm, that's right, my friend. You should never go into battle without armor. Well, let's do it! Yeah! <laughs> Ready? Ready. All right, on your mark. Get set. Behead. No! 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 Did we get it at the same time? Yeah, we sure did. Oh man, okay, right, let's, yeah, we gotta do it again. All right, ready? You gonna call it? Yeah. Okay. Go! Oh, no, 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 this is easy. <laughs> oh, oh, the tape was ripping off my arm hair. <laughs> All right, that's two. Okay. You win. Uh, well, that's well played. You will be a worthy adversary. Thank you. It's Bible story time with Kellen. Hey guys. Hey Kellen, what do you got for us today? A pretty amazing story. But more importantly, what are you wearing? Very comfortable armor. What a coincidence. I'm actually talking about armor today. What? That's a, that is a coincidence. Uh, take it away. Our Bible story comes from the book of Ephesians. It's where the apostle Paul wrote about something that people often call the armor of God. Did somebody say Bible story? I hit it. Did. Glad you came. Glad you're here. I know it's getting late, but never fear. We'll get a blow by blow of the Bible story on the Mel Solomon story recap. Kellen Kelster. Kelchese, Mr. Kelleen. Just Kellen is fine. You got it, Just Kellen. Great to have you on the show. You know, it's not your show. Eh, uh, tomato, tomato. That doesn't make any sense. Eh, uh, potato, potato. Um... Hey, you know, speaking of starches, my brother-in-law Greg is over there on the ivory. Say hello, Greg. I eat mashed potatoes for breakfast when I'm nervous. Oh, no, Greg. All right, Melv. <laughs> Say no more, Kellen. You just tell the story and I'll give you some very subtle musical interpretation. Subtle? Yeah, like my suit. Right. Okay, so Paul wrote, let the Lord make you strong. Depend on his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor. Then you can remain strong against the devil's evil plans. Oh boy, did you say devil? <laughs> Hit it, Greg. 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 Potato cake. <sighs> Nap times later, Greg. Oh. Play that devilish tune. Do you know the devil? He's not a friend of mine. He cheats at Pacheesy, the opposite of kind. You gotta be ready for when he pulls your leg. Not a good thing about him, except he makes a really good egg and fruitcake. 
Back to you, Kellen. Thank you. Paul reminds us there are things in this world that we can't see that can make life really tough. Things like temptations or thoughts that tell us we're not good enough. We can't fight those things by ourselves. We need God's help. And Paul wrote, we can stand up to anything when we put on the armor of God. The armor of God? Yes. Huh. Must be heavy, right, Greg? Greg. Greg! Ah, oh, no, Greg's asleep again. I can't lift my head. I don't think Paul meant that kind of armor. God's armor is made of invisible things that God has given us. Paul wrote, put the belt of truth around your waist. Put the armor of godliness on your chest. Wear on your feet what will prepare you to tell the good news of peace. Good news of peace? Oh, I got just the one for you, Kellen. Hit it, Greg. That's it. When I want to tell some good, good news, I gotta wear my newspaper shoes. Puppies and rainbows and only nice sections. Too bad they only last 23 seconds and even less in the rain. Um, I think the good news Paul was writing about was the good news about Jesus, the life Jesus lived, the things he taught, and what he did for us when he died and rose again. It can bring us peace with God and with each other, and we can take that message of peace wherever we go. That is good news. I know, but Paul wasn't done yet. There's even more armor to put on. He wrote, pick up the shield of faith. With it, we can put out all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Put on the helmet of salvation. Boy, howdy. Hit it, Greg. Greg? Yeah. Why that song, Greg? Of all the songs, I told you never to play that song, Greg. I'm not carrying a shield, Greg. Your flaming arrow pierced my heart and inflamed it. The worst of all heartburns. No tums will cure that. All that's left is a charred ember of suffering. What you got next, Kellen? That was a little mean. I know, right? See, Greg, even Kellen agrees with me. No, I mean how you yelled at Greg just now. Ah, uh, that's just how we communicate. That's not healthy. Our therapist said the same thing. Funny. <laughs> Finally, Paul wrote, and take up the sword of the Holy Spirit, and the sword is God's word. There are things out there that we cannot see. Words people say, thoughts in our minds, feelings in our heart, stuff that can hurt us. But God has given us things like truth, faith, peace, and his word that can help protect us so we are able to stand up to anything. You know what, Kellen? I hear you. Hey, Greg. Greg. I'm sorry I yelled at you. You know you're my favorite brother-in-law, right? Come on, Greg. You think you got one more song in you? Come on. Okay. Greg, all right. <laughs> Let's hear it. Oh, perfect, Greg, perfect. You've got the belt of truth, the helmet of salvation. Hold your faith shield without reservation. Live the way God wants you to. It's like wearing a chest plate. No arrow gets through. Carry the good news with your shoes of peace. Use God's word for the least of these. God gives us his armor. This much is true. So stand up tall the whole day through. Not bad. The end. Thanks, Melv and Greg.
Great story, Kellen. Yeah, you know, I uh, I think we might be wearing the wrong kind of armor. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah. I mean, it might work for whatever it is you were doing, but if we want to live with confidence and stand up for what's right, even when it's hard, we need to remind ourselves of all the tools God has given us. We need to put on his armor. It's good stuff. Thanks, Kellen. No doubt. I'll see you next time. So how do you put on God's armor? I mean, I'm not sure we have enough duct tape. I don't know. Maybe we're already wearing it and we just can't see it. Oh. <laughs> or maybe it's not literal armor. It just represents the tools God has given us to stand strong. Would I be able to feel it? Mm. Reveal the question. When is it hard to stand strong? Oh. Uh, maybe when you feel like you're not good enough. Yeah, or, or maybe when you're worried what your friends might think. Mm -hmm. Or when everyone is saying that the kind of music you listen to is bad, but you know that it doesn't matter what everyone thinks and that your music is really awesome. I'm telling you, prog rock square dancing is not a thing. Yes, it is. Talk about it together. When is it hard to stand strong? Yeah, and thankfully we know that God has given us all kinds of things to help us stand strong for him, for ourselves, and for others. That's all we got today. We'll see you next time on, on the So-and-So -so Show. 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 Show.